One of the prerequisites of long-term financial success is to invest continuously. It's a simple drill. You keep investing over the years. Your investments benefit from compounding and long-term appreciation, and you retire with adequate wealth. But how do you know that your investment portfolio will achieve your financial goals? Most of the people do not know. They rely on financial advisors, investment managers, and real estate promoters for investing advice. Very few people are aware of the fact that while these individuals have legal obligations to put their clients' interests first, there are no set rules to quantify or gauge their results for honesty. In this video, we find out the answer to the question, are you fetching water with a leaky bucket? Coming up right now. Hi, I am Manyara Kirago and this is Money Skills, the channel that informs, educates, and sometimes challenges conventional thinking to help you manage your money better and ultimately help you attain financial independence. If you are new here, please click the subscribe button and the bell icon to be informed whenever I upload a new video. Please stay tuned in right up to the end of the video to receive a free offer. As a financial coach, I have worked with hundreds of people who received average or above average returns at most while working with a financial advisor. Since you are paying a fee for your advisor, shouldn't the result be good, if not spectacular? I am going to discuss how you can choose the right financial advisor and investments for achieving your long-term financial goals. The basic question you need to ask yourself is this. Do you have the right advisor? Is your financial advisor working for your best interests? Most people ignore the nitty-gritty details of their investment portfolios primarily because of their blind faith in their financial advisor. That's the biggest mistake an investor can make. Financial advisors are professionals just like you, and it is possible to sway their decisions or their strategy through commissions. One of the first things you must find out about your financial advisor is how he makes his or her money. Financial advisors operate on a non-fiduciary, fee-based, or fee-only model. A non-fiduciary advisor works for the company promoting the investment. They earn a commission on investment products they sell and have little more than cosmetic loyalty to you. Examples of such advisors include financial advisors who work for insurance companies, unit trust companies, and banks. A fee-based financial advisor works on your behalf and is legally bound to suggest investments that offer decent returns. However, these advisors are allowed to earn a commission for the investment products they add to your portfolio. It's more than likely then that an advisor will prioritize his benefits over yours. Some financial experts even consider fee-based advisors to be little better than non-fiduciary advisors. A fee-only financial advisor, on the other hand, receives compensation for his advice only. These advisors do not earn any commissions, so their performance is critical for their professional success. Fee-only advisors are naturally motivated to better their clients' investment returns. This is how you choose your financial advisor. The first thing is, it's most advisable to choose a fee-only financial advisor. Ask your advisor for certification or any special awards received for their performance. Question them about their investment strategy. Get references about their past clients, both happy and unhappy ones, though it may be challenging to receive the latter, but ask anyway. Set a benchmark for measuring performance. Schedule semi-annual or annual meetings with your advisor. Keep track of your investment portfolio. Ask your financial advisor to share timely results. The second thing you need to do is vet financial products. How do you examine a financial product? Do you have blind faith in your financial advisor or friend to work in your best interests? If this is so, you are more than likely 
to lose money than to book in profits on these investments. Whenever someone mentions a financial product, use these parameters to evaluate the investment. Does the advisor receive a commission for this investment? If yes, find out more about the compensation model. You can visit the official site of the financial institution offering the, the asset and find out how the affiliate or network partners are paid. Some of them may not have this information. Another thing is to check the historical returns of the investment. While past returns are not a guarantee of future performance, they do provide an idea of the returns that you are likely to generate. It is always good to get a second opinion. Does the investment product offer fantastic returns? And is it available for a limited period only? If that's the case, that's a scam. Or at least there is a high likelihood of it being one. If an investment opportunity sounds too good to be true or presents an unorthodox investing model, it's best to avoid it. How did the advisor come to know about the investment? If you have a friend or a relative that happens to know a secret stock or a secret investment that could quadruple your profits within a short time, run for the hills, it's quite likely that either your friend doesn't know much about the investment altogether or is receiving a commission for the referral. Identify the tax profile of the investment. The returns you generate on an investment are subject to taxation and you must factor in these taxes to identify the accurate returns of the investment. An asset may appear worth investing in before taking the taxes into account, so make it a habit to calculate taxes up front. Always be careful about pyramid schemes and dubious real estate investments, especially on undeveloped land. A thorough analysis of the history of an investment will help you realize that hardly any network marketing schemes are genuine and provide good returns. However, that does not stop people from joining these schemes and losing their hard-earned money. I have worked with quite a few individuals who have not only lost their capital, but the respect of their friends, relatives, and co-workers because of pyramid schemes. Some have even broken up their families. Whenever someone offers you a fantastic network marketing investment, I would suggest you ignore it. The same rule applies to real estate investments. While land may offer excellent returns under the right circumstances in form of long-term appreciation, it is crucial that you identify the scope of development in the area. If you come across an investment opportunity in unplanned plots, do thorough research about any upcoming projects and, and the demographic factors that propel or limit development in the neighborhood. You can reach out to your local authorities for more details. Do not be lured and trapped into buying undevelopable and unsellable plots that offer no cash flow and only a distant hope of capital appreciation. That is not a dependable way of achieving your financial goals. When it comes to investing, I always advise people to be cautious and to do a comprehensive research before investing in a financial product. Always remember that you will rely on these investments in your later years, so it is crucial to identify their return, their risk profile, and other parameters before buying in. If you have a limited understanding of financial products, make sure to seek professional advice. No one will suffer more than you from the loss. If you need help in gaining control of your finances and getting on track to financial independence, contact me and I'll help you build long-term wealth. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this video, please like, share and also click the subscribe button and the bell icon to be the first to know whenever I upload a new video. As a bonus, I have a free report, the top money mistakes Kenyan professionals make and how to avoid them. To download the free report, follow the link below to my website. I look forward to seeing you. <music>